I'm here with Hunter Leininger. Hunter, you can say hi. <laughs> hi, I'm Hunter Leininger. Nice to meet you. <laughs> how old are you? I am 19 years old now. Yeah, and how old were you when you were on the show? So I was 18 years old during okay. the race. I think my first question for you is, how did you even come to be on the show? Like, how did that even start? So my journey started 13 years ago. Um, I started adventure racing when I was six years old. And adventure racing is a really small group of event mm -hmm. that it's only adults. There's no kids that have ever done the sport before. So when I started at six, I was the only kid out there. People were like, what? This is like a six-year-old going through these mud pits and everything. So it was really rare for a kid to be out there and um, just be racing against a bunch of adults. So my first four years, I never saw another, another kid at a race. So then my story started picking up some ground and people started hearing that a kid was doing these crazy events. So there's a bunch of kids coming out now because of me. I kind of inspired a whole generation of kids to do these races. And Eco Challenge was always the pinnacle of our sport. I was lucky enough to be invited to the show and we participated in everything. It was a dream come true to finally get to that race. Yeah, okay, so about the show specifically, like, what is it? Like, what is an adventure race? Like, what is eco racing? <laughs> oh, man, adventure race is pretty much every crazy extreme sport you can think of, all combined in one race, nonstop. So we raced Eco Challenge was 12 days long, nonstop. We probably only slept for one hour a day. Oh, wow. So it was just like nonstop racing. We had trekking, biking, paddling, sailing, stand up paddleboard, like rock climbing, all these different extreme sports all in one. Mm -hmm. and the crazy thing about adventure racing is we don't know what we're going to be doing until we show up at the start line. Um, and then everything's map and compass. So there's no GPS, no <laughs> sign or anything. So we're just map and compass through the jungle, no trails or anything. So it's the unknown adventure racing. You have no clue. So how, like, I'm sure it's called the world's toughest race. So I'm sure it was hard, but how did it compare to like your other experiences like racing? It's the toughest race. And in my opinion, it was hands down the toughest, like the disciplines that we had to do, it was just insane. Like a hundred mile trek through just mud and all this crazy stuff. And it was the discipline, the stuff they threw at you was unlike any other sport, like a Ironman, you kind of know, okay, you're going to be swimming for two miles and then you're going to be biking on a road. That road conditions don't really change. It's like, oh, maybe there's wind. But in Eco Challenge, we had the craziest storms, the crazy everything that made it really tough. Yeah. Was it ever like scary at any point where you're like scared oh. for your life? <laughs> so surprisingly, Fiji was actually pretty safe. There's no poisonous animals or anything, but the terrain there um, was just crazy. Like we feared for our lives at least five times, just like climbing up a waterfall cliff and one of the ropes breaks and then like we fall back or something like that. It was just a lot of scary moments. Our, our scariest moment as a team that we almost dropped out was two of my teammates um, got hypothermia in a swimming section where we had to swim five miles in this freezing cold water. It was like 48 degrees and they both got hypothermic and we almost had to pull it out. But funny story, we found a dry rock in the middle of this river. We all huddled on top of it, tripped down, no clothes, and slept there for four hours just shivering in a space blanket. So that mm. was the scariest moment, um, but we bounced back and we finished. What are your most prominent accomplish accomplishments that you think helped you get to where you are right now? Yeah, so um, I currently have three world records um, in adventure racing and endurance sports. So my first one was the youngest person to actually complete um, the, our national championship, and that's a 24-hour race. And I, I finished the race at 10 years old and the previous youngest was 25. Wow. So it was a big difference. Um, so I kind of like, that's when my whole journey kind of blew up and people started knowing my story and everything. But um, then I went on to do the youngest person to complete an expedition race. So expedition race is anything more than three days. And I finished that and again, I crushed it. Was, I was 12 years old and it was like the second youngest at the, that race was pretty. So it's just crazy to be such a young person doing these crazy challenges. And then my latest world record was actually at 16 years old when I was the youngest to complete the world championships of adventure racing. So that was like unheard of, even a kid, like even a 20 yard to do that race was just like, oh my God. And I was 16, so it was pretty magical. It gave me the confidence and the courage to 
half of the eco challenge. So like other than adventure racing, what would you want to do if you went to school? Along with my adventure racing, racing career, I actually own my backpack. I own my own company where I manufacture backpacks for Disney and Universal and everything. So that's my main job along with training for all these crazy races. But if I was to go to college, it would definitely be engineering. So I've learned a lot about business from running my own business, but I want to learn mechanical engineering in particular. What was your favorite experience from the show, like overall? Oh man, just, I think the whole country of Fiji. So the Fijian people were the nicest people ever. Like we came in the village after biking for like three days straight, whatever. And there's just a whole village at 2 a.m. that were just up. And these people don't have anything. They don't have any modern day luxuries. They don't have running water. They don't have clean drinking water. They don't even have electric electricity or anything, but they were the happiest people ever. And they, at 2 a.m., there was hundreds of people up for us just to bike through their village and they gave us food and water and they let us in their house and sleep. It was just, the people were just so nice when they didn't have anything. 